Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And tonight we're going to talk about subtle ways that exterminators will try to high pressure sell you and you don't even realize it's happening. Uh, now, I'm not talking about sales, like someone comes up, they knock on your door, like that. Oh, hello! You want to buy from me? Let me tell you about why you need this. Not that kind of person. I'm talking about you've already got an exterminator, he already comes to your house, you've got a signed contract, and you, those are the people that I'm talking about high pressure sales. There's not really a need to high pressure sell someone who's already bought from you. I door knock. I've done it. I've tried to, you know, high pressure sell. I am not a high pressure salesman. If someone doesn't want to buy from me, I don't sell it to them. That's just... I don't know, maybe it's a flaw or, you know, but that's just the way I always have been. I just don't like it. I don't like the sales techniques at all. Um, not that I haven't been taught them. I, most exterminators use them. In fact, all the ones I know do use them. And in fact, every exterminator that I know uh, uses these sales techniques. This is a real common thing, and that's why I'm talking about it tonight. And it's probably going to step on a lot of people's toes. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of exterminators who watch me on YouTube and this is probably going to upset them that I'm going to say this, but I'm going to, you know, it's something that I think is, is unethical. And so that's why I'm going to bring it up tonight because you know me, I'd like to talk about a lot of controversial things on my channel because I don't care. I think you, the consumer, need to know about it. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So the first point that we're going to get into is, uh, let's say you've canceled your service and the exterminator shows up to your house anyway. Uh, you may have sent in a note with your payment. That's a real common way that, that people will cancel. In almost 30 years of, of, of being an exterminator, I the most common way that people cancel their service because they don't want to call you on the phone and tell someone, hey, don't come to my house. Um, they would rather send it in a letter. It's more formal. They can make a photocopy. They can keep a copy of it. This is proof I canceled my service. So it just, a letter, logically it just makes more sense to send a letter because people can still say, well, I never got your phone call, you know, and that's something that, that is to said a lot, but we'll go into the letter first. Oh, you canceled your service? I'm sorry. Oh man, I've already driven all the way out here. Um, do you mind if I just do it today? All right. You know your check is cleared, so you know they got the letter. So now they've lied to you. All right, so your exterminator has said they haven't gotten the message. Now, do you really... What... It's a hard question to ask. What do you do now that your exterminator has lied to you? This is somebody you've had in your house. You don't really realize they've lied to you. That's the point of the sale, is that you don't realize they've lied to you. They make you feel guilty. They make you feel like, uh, well, maybe the mail didn't pick it up, even though you know in the back of your mind you knew, you, you saw the balance in your checkbook, you know your check cleared, you knew they got the message, but here they are anyway. Uh, let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate, all right? Your exterminator didn't get the message. Why not? What does that say about their management? The person that gets the check, that got your note, why didn't the message get to the technician that comes to your house? I mean, isn't he the first person that should be notified? Oh, by the way, Bob down the street doesn't want you to come this month. But you show up anyway, you do the service, they let you do the service because they feel guilty. It plays on their guilt because they like you. They, the thing is, they've hired you. They already like you. They, they don't mind that you're there. It's just an inconvenience to them, you know, that you've, that you've come anyway, even though they've canceled. It's a high-pressure technique that I was taught how to use. It's probably the number one thing that bothers me the most is when you go to somebody's house and you already know they've canceled, and you knock on the door anyway, trying to get that extra month of service. It's not worth, you know, the, the thing is, 
if you do it the first month, you'll do it again next month. Because you'll come up to the door and say, oh, I forgot. I, I remember that. Now that we're talking about it, I remember we did talk about that last month. I completely forgot. I'm just so used to coming to your house because I've been coming for so long. And now you feel bad because they're your friend. They've been coming to your house for so long. Don't make me leave. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. My wife, she's filming me, and she laughs at my funny faces I make. But I'm serious. It's like the puppy dog eyes. They're giving you this, like, but don't, don't send me away, you know? And it's your money. You know, the thing is, you're the boss. They're not the boss. You're the boss. You hired them to do a job for you. And if you tell them, look, I don't need the job done this month, they shouldn't show up. I don't show up. If, if I'm, if I, now, now I will do, if I'm worried that maybe the message, but maybe there was a problem with me, maybe I didn't do a job that I was supposed to do. All right, let's, let me, let me tell you what I do. I get a letter in the mail with a check. And it's from, you know, Bob. Let's just use Bob as an example. I don't know who Bob is. We're using him. We're just changing the names. We're not trying to hurt anybody. <laughs> so Bob down the street has sent me in a letter with his check. And he's like, don't come next month. Uh, I'm canceling my service. Immediately, the first thought that enters my mind is, what have I done wrong? How have I offended Bob? How have I upset Bob? What have I done that has caused Bob to cancel because I thought I was doing a good job. So I pick up the phone and I call Bob. I don't go to his house because, I mean, you may get another sale off of it. You may get another month of service off of it, but I would rather know what the problem is and maybe rectify it. And maybe I still get to go out there because if I call Bob and he's like, you know, you came out to the house and I thought you were going to treat them out of my shed. I told you I had black widow spiders getting in my shed, and you didn't do it. And I did. I noticed that you didn't do it, and I'm just upset, and I canceled my service because I noticed that you didn't do the shed. Now, I'm a human. I forget. This has happened to me before. Uh, and I'll say, well, Bob, I'll come right over right now. I'll treat your shed for free. I am really sorry. I didn't mean to forget. It's just, I, I'm brain dead. I'm a man, and I'm brain dead. My wife will tell you, men are brain dead, because we are and we forget stuff and usually that will smooth things over when they real when the customer realizes that you're willing to go you just want to make your customers happy it's not about the money you're giving it to them for free it's just i want to make sure that you as my customer are as happy you as you could possibly be i will take the time i will spend the gas money i will spend the time i will come out there and i will do it right i am really sorry that i have done something wrong or not done anything that I was supposed to do, you know? So that's, that's, it's, it's, it's better to do that than go out and expect your customer to pay you anyway. You know, that's just not the right way to be. And truthfully, most everybody is just, they're nice. Most everybody's nice. I know in the world nowadays, everybody's like, oh, everybody's such a jerk, but that's not the way it is. Most people are really nice. And once you've been there for a few times and you learn how people are, most people are just, you know, they may be crabby out in public because they just don't like mingling with other people. <laughs> so, but anyway, let's not ramble too much. We'll go on to the second uh, point that, that I wanted to make tonight about the subtleness that you're being high pressure sold to. Let's say that you're cooking dinner, all right? And your exterminator should have been there two, three hours ago. Knock on the door, it's a bug man. Here he is, ready to spray the house. You're cooking cabbage and turkey and, I'm trying to think of other, cranberry, Thanksgiving dinner. That's not really Thanksgiving, it's just, you, that's just what you want to cook for your family tonight. And here's the exterminator. Your family's ready to eat. Everybody's home from school. Your husband's home, or your wife's home, however, I don't know, I cook a lot, I cook for my family, I cook for my family tonight, I made pad thai, it was delicious, but, uh, um, 
you know, now it's an inconvenience. And you're, you tell the exterminator, it's really not a good time. You're really late. You should have been here hours ago. And then the exterminator looks at you and says, well, I'm already here. Is it okay if I just do it? Now you're, the point is, is that you're a number. You're not a person anymore. When they don't take your health into account, they don't take your convenience into account, they don't take the fact that you're the boss into account, that you're the one paying the bill. Now they're there, they've driven out to your house, you feel bad, and you're like, just skip the kitchen. Or just skip the dining room in the kitchen because we just don't want anything done in those rooms because we're going to eat. Which is, I mean, that's what you have to do anyway because you can't spray while people are preparing food. You just can't do that. That's why a lot of restaurants with exterminators, exterminators will have keys or they'll go when they're closing up in the evening and they're, they've already prepared all their food and all the stuff's gone. You know, you don't, you don't service when people are preparing food. Most pesticides will not let you do that. And just about all of them are that way. You can't use them around food preparation. So now you've done their house and you, you haven't given them the 100% that you should give them on a job well done. You've skipped two rooms. You skipped the kitchen and you skipped the dining room. You know, and a lot of people, their kitchen and their dining room are the same room. So... There, you've missed that. Let's say they have ants coming in their kitchen in the summer, and you didn't do the you didn't do the kitchen. That's that's a very poor sales technique, and it is high pressure sales, whether you realize it or not. It's subtle, but it is a high pressure sales technique, and that's why I made these. I'm 24 hours. I make time to do the job. Uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to sell anything here either. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that I want to get to my customer's house when my customer needs me there. I don't want to be there during dinner time. I don't want to be there during breakfast. You know, when people are eating and they've got food out and everything, you don't want to be doing the house, you know, when people are like that. Now, some people just get the outside only and then it wouldn't bother them. But, you know, when you're going inside someone's home and you're treating inside their home, you know, a lot of times people can't even be there. You know, if you're treating for fleas or something, then people have to be gone. They have to be out of the house for three hours, you know, or four hours, depending on your label. And so you just, all that stuff has to be taken into account. Do you know your labels? Are you even, are you breaking label by treating the house when they're not home? You know, or when they're home, when, when they're home, is what I meant to say. See, I'm brain dead. I told you men are brain dead. But anyway, uh, so... Now there there is some I I'm not going to be I'm not going to hammer on exterminators too much because or or well, I am but not solely there is a reason that exterminators need you on a route for example when I go into Charlottesville I'm in Charlottesville all day when I go to Lynchburg I'm in Lynchburg all day I try to get all of my customers in a route so I can, not for myself, but to save my customers money. Because if I have to take gas for, you know, an extra day and have to come all the way out to Charlottesville or all the way to Lynchburg or Roanoke or Bedford or anywhere that I go, I have to charge extra. Because, I mean, I need to make a living and I can't do it at cost. And a lot of my pest control pricing, the, the way I price my pest control, it's at cost if I have to come out on a different day. That's how affordable I try to make my pest control. So the reason my prices are the way they are is that way when I'm at Larry's house, Larry lives three doors down from Bob, I can do Larry and then I can go right to Bob's house and I'm not spending any money in gas at all so I can afford to do it. But if I have to go all the way back home and come all the way back out to Bob's house, I've wasted a trip. And I'm actually doing it right at cost then. I mean, that's honestly, that's, that's about how it is. When you figure up gas and insurance and all the things that factor into, you know, what price is a job. So there is a reason that you need to be on a schedule. But if an exterminator is getting to your house and it's happening multiple times and they're getting to your house later and later and later, 
they need to rethink about the way they're doing their route. They probably need to split their day into two or three days so then they can get back to your house at a time that works for you. So keep that in mind. The service is for you. It's not for them. You're not, you're doing them a service by hiring them, but you're hiring them because they need to do your, the job you want them to do. So they work for you. You're the boss. And this brings me to my, my third point is expiration dates. A lot of exterminators will say when they come to your house, well, it's this price today, but tomorrow it's going to go up because I have to make a special trip. Now, like I said, that goes into the gas again and doing things at cost, having to make a special trip. Sometimes that's valid, but a lot of times it is not. And especially, all right, if you're getting an initial rate for pest control, you're not really losing much. You go out and you do an inspection for somebody. You give them a free inspection. It's a free inspection. You are at, you're losing money when you do free inspections. But you're doing a free inspection as a courtesy for your customers. It's something that you do for your customers. If the customer calls ahead or they send a letter in and they say maybe they're not canceling, Maybe they're sending a letter in just to skip me for a month. And now they have given express notice to skip them for the month and you show up anyway. And then you tell them, well, if I have to come back tomorrow, I'm going to have to charge you more. This price is only good for today. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to charge you $25 extra to come tomorrow. Well, because it's, I have to pay for gas, you know? That is a high-pressure sale. And that's borderline actual obvious high-pressure sales when it gets to that point. Because, they, I mean, you can, most people know, recognize that right off. And what a jerk, you know, the way you're being treated. But that's, like I said, this is all stuff that I've been taught to do as a sales technique, as a way to keep customers, as a way to get my quota for the month. Uh, get my commission for the month. Um, this is what you do to keep your customers. This is how you keep your customers. If Bob's going to cancel, go to Bob's house anyway because he might keep you anyway. You're going to be in the neighborhood. It doesn't hurt you to drive over there and take the five minutes to talk to Bob because he might keep you. But what about Bob? There's, there's a movie. It's a good movie that was filmed in Bedford. Actually, it really wasn't that good of a movie, but anyway. But what about Bob? Seriously. It's not about you. It's not about the company. It's not about the money that's being made by doing Bob's house. It's about what Bob wants. There's a saying in sales where, oh, he is such a good salesman that he can sell ketchup packets to a woman wearing white gloves. Now, I've said this before in other videos, but does Bob have french fries? Does Bob even need ketchup? You know, just because you can sell somebody ketchup packets who's wearing white gloves, you've got to look at it and say, well, do they need the ketchup that you're selling them? You know, or are you just taking advantage of Bob's good nature? You know, this is the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems in all marketing. It's not just pest control. It's a lot in pest control, but it's everywhere. Is the customer is just seen as a number. It's just how much can I get out of Bob? Not what does Bob need? It's what is Bob going to give me? What am I going to get from Bob? And that's just not the right way to run your business. It's, what can I do to help you, Bob? How can I explain to you that you need service in December? Do you remember when we first came out? And by the way, you can do this on the phone. You don't have to drive to Bob and pressure him in person because it's a lot more pressure on somebody in person to buy from you. And this is why a lot of sales tech, a lot of salesmen will do this. They'll come to your house and you're already there. You're already there. You're right there. Two of you right here. 
it's hard to say no to someone in person. But you can call Bob on the phone and you can tell him, I noticed you sent in a letter that you wanted to cancel through the winter. Now, see, like I said, I'm, I'm using this as an example. They're not canceling, period. They're just canceling through the winter. All right. Say you come in, and it's like, all right, uh, let me explain to you why you need service in December. Do you remember a few years ago when you had mice get in your basement? It's time to service the mice. Are you sure you want to cancel early? Because I would love to be able to, to take care of your problem. You may not have any mice at all this year. You may be fine. But just remember those mice that came in. And then the Bob will be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I hadn't had any mice for so long. I didn't even think about it being wintertime. Just, just come on out anyway. That's fine. Most time that's what happens. Because it's a lot of time it's miscommunication between the uh, exterminator and the customer. And if you explain it to your customer, I mean, sometimes they just don't have the money. Don't try to force them to pay you. They don't have the money. And sometimes they don't remember and you need to remind them. But you really should do that on a monthly basis. You know, when you talk to your customer, you say, oh yeah, today I found ants outside. They were crawling up your deck. I took care of it for you. I know they hadn't gotten in the house yet because we've been doing so good on pest control in your house, but I did notice ants on your deck. I took care of it. Let me know if you see any more ants on the deck because you live here and you know what's here. You know, that's, that's good exterminating. That's how you be a good exterminator. You don't force your, your customers to buy from you if they don't need you, especially if they've already canceled. You, you can call them. You can talk to them. Everybody's got a phone, you know. I mean, even my grandma has a phone. She don't have an answer machine. She don't have call waiting. But she's got a phone. And I can call her. I can talk to her. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, then uh, think about subscribing. And if you're on my YouTube, because I'm starting to put my videos on YouTube and Facebook now. If you're on my YouTube channel... um. There's a little notification bell there. I am trying to get this out as fast as I can, but my wife is going to cough or sneeze or something because she is making the funniest looking faces right now. But anyway, the uh, if you like it, thumbs up. If you really like it, think about sharing it, circulating it around, get the word out, let everybody know. I know this is going to probably step on some toes because I know there's a lot of exterminators that watch my channel, but I'm, I'm just trying to lay it on the line. I'm always honest with all of my customers and all of my friends out here in YouTube land and Facebook land. Y'all have a great evening. I really appreciate it, and I'll be talking to you later.